What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? Podcast about life in the music industry. I'm your host, Patrick Tarnowski. With me is Matt Reed. And uh, this is going to be some, we're going to do some Halloween fun action today. We've got uh, Billy Jake and Nick from the Pennsylvania band West Main on the show. Y'all. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? What up? Thanks for having what us. Up? Yeah, man. Awesome to be here. Hell yeah. We're going to, uh, you know, since this episode's going to air like the day before Halloween, I was like, let's, we got to throw some, some fun questions in there. We got to switch it up. Ooh, it's yeah, funny. because the best thing you brought up in our, yeah. In our band group chat, uh, once a week, our singer hits us with, <laughs> I need horror movie suggestions. And like, Jake is Mr. List. Oh. Like, off offhand just like 12 rifled off with it's like mla seconds. format and everything citations yeah. we're excited <laughs> it hurts my feelings though because chris doesn't listen to like what i tell him and then he'll <laughs> ask the same question a day later and, and then i'll like, post it on facebook yeah i'm like i just gave you yeah. an entire list scroll back a day he <laughs> asked for suggestions to facebook like a week after we already gave him a bunch of suggestions <laughs> yeah, and everyone gave him the same suggestions <laughs> yeah so this is a question I said you guys like horror movies and have have any of you seen Skinnamarink yet? No. No. I've heard okay. good things. Yes, me too. I haven't seen it. I've heard great things. I also saw a TikTok naming it like in the top 10 scariest movies of all times according to science. Oh wow. I like like the heartbeat like type thing. Yeah. Nope, just science. <laughs> science. <laughs> all of the above chemistry, biology, whatever. Yeah. So I uh that that really intrigues me because I wanted to see it before that. Yeah. I have so actually I want to ask everyone if you have like a seasonal Halloween movie that like what your go to that you watch every single year. Uh I mean that's a good one. Yeah, I'd say I feel like I will watch all my movies like year round. Yeah, well you live with Shelby. <laughs> if I'm gonna sure. like to be cliche, I would say just the original Halloween series. Sure. But like, I don't know. Then I guess like Wrong Turn. That series is good. I like the original Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, they're always good to watch. Or Rob Zombie's movies because they're always like weird Halloween themes like yeah. thrown into them. Always takes place in like October. House of so, Thousand Corpses is classic. Yeah. yeah, we always end up watching like um, Nightmare Before Christmas and like Hocus Pocus this time of the year. Yeah, uh, because we will watch the scariest movies in the middle of like June. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, for sure. It, me and my wife, we try to every October we try to pick one like series that we haven't watched before, and so we'll go through that entire series. Um, this year, one of the ones that we couldn't believe we hadn't even actually watched all of. It, I think I've only watched like two of them. Is uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've, I've only, only ever seen the original. I'll yeah. be honest; I don't think I've seen any of them. Wow! Yeah, we just we just watched number two yesterday, and it's awesome. Yeah, you're hurting Jake's feelings right I know, now. I know. The only one, like I'll see it on like Netflix or like or whatever it's on, and it's always the new ones, like the Friday Thirteenth and Chain Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's always a new one. And I'll be like Shelby, and she's like, "No, those ones don't don't do it. We need to go yeah, watch yeah, the originals." Yeah, and we just never yeah. got around to doing it. I I'm gonna go ahead and and disagree with that because i think the original texas chainsaw massacre it just i don't think it holds up like we watched it and it's it's pretty boring um i think i think but i thought the remake of it like the 2003 remake was fucking awesome it was solid i think so a lot of the like on set stories and all that stuff like with like the real human bones uh, in yeah. the original because it was cheaper than using fake like yeah, stuff like yeah. that makes that movie be a lot better but if you're I just mean, going in for a cold watch yes it's it's, it's dated I, I agree i agree for sure it's just like you know if it was if i was seeing it in the theaters in like whatever 79 or 78 yeah. whenever, whenever it came out i'm sure it'd be fucking terrifying but the fact that I, that's like what they show is in like PG movies now. It's yeah. like it's, yeah, it, the the horror level doesn't hold up. Yeah, there's uh, like, and don't get me wrong, like John Carpenter is obviously the Godfather and a mastermind, but like, the thing is probably one of the greatest horror movies of all time, in my opinion. Great. Yeah, it's great. It's not. It's not that good today by today's standards, but right. 
I do think the practical effects blow a lot of practical effects today out of the water. And yeah. from an appreciation stance, it's one of the best. Did it does did it age well? God no. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a hard time going back and watching a lot of old like cult classics and stuff because yeah. for that very reason, they're just like it's really corny sometimes. Like when I go back and watch like um, the Nightmare on Elm Street and Fre- Freddy Krueger sometimes makes me cringe. Yeah. I'm yeah, but like, oh, the, dude, dude, the but it's so the good though. So remake was so bad. Oh, dude, the yeah. Mike, the Michael Bay film. Yeah, one, it, was yeah. So it was so bad. Was he looked it's, like a pig. He literally looked like a hog. It's chronologically like incorrect as well. The beginning <laughs> of the movie takes There's place. Nothing in about yeah. it is correct. And then like it'll pan it, like after the beginning scene, it pans to like the intro and the cars driving down the road. Yeah, and it's like a big Cadillac Escalade. I'm like, yeah. They don't even they don't even let you know like oh hey it's 2009 now like it yeah this would be 1980 to just make it up whatever year you want <laughs> yeah well it's Michael Bay yeah his idea of a plot is explosions yeah, stick to Transformers buddy. I could get I could get behind that though <laughs> but I, when it comes to Transformers <laughs> sure all right so before we get into more Halloween stuff let, let's talk about the band here uh, as of this date. Uh, you're about to release two new singles under Common Thread Records called GSS and Where I've Been. Can you tell us a bit about the new songs? Oof. I'll let there. This one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jake's actually the newest in the band, but those are the first two songs that we wrote after our founding guitar player, the guy who like I wrote every all of the previous music with it's the it was our first time writing without him and not having him as like i've always described jimmy as like the john to my paul like the beatles kind of thing um whether he wrote it or not he's like the perfect proofreader he's the perfect editor and like we bounced off each other really well in that respect so i was terrified going into writing these And it just so happened that like Jake stepping in, Nick moving from bass to guitar, like it it just locked in so well. And like we hit the studio and we recorded the songs with uh, Matt Brash from the Wonder Years. And he took like a really, really hands on approach with the production side. And he warned us straight up. He was like, you can tell us you can tell me not to. You can tell me when too much is too much. And. And all that, but I was like, no, dude. Like, I'm. Most of us here are hardcore kids. We have no idea what we're doing. Right Any on. notes from a seasoned professional? We'll we'll take it. And that dude pushed us. And like a- across any genre, like these two songs, I've never been so proud to put something out in my life. Oh, yeah. How um, did How did you get started working with Matt from the Wonder Years? Uh, we're all from the same hometown. Um, a lot of friends have worked with him in the past and like, I always knew that he recorded bands. Um, but I was always kind of like, it's Matt from the wonder years. There's <laughs> no way he's going to give me the time of day. And he answered an Instagram message and was just like, yo, let's set up a call. We talked for like an hour while we were all actually on the way to play a show up in Harrisburg and, uh, hung up the phone. And I just like looked at all the guys. I was like, yo, this is sick. This is like the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I don't know, man. That really made the the band ride really boring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what? Yeah, now? it's 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 crazy <laughs> getting in, like getting into a room with him. And like I said, he takes hands on with production. So he was coming to practices before we ever even started recording. It was he brought honestly, his own was, seating and everything. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was intimidating. Like Matt Brash walks in, puts his own chair down. Pulls out an acoustic guitar <laughs> and unfolds a laptop full of notes, yeah. and he's like, "All right, boys," and I'm like, "Shit, he uh, hates this. He hates dude. everything about these songs right now." I was like even more nervous than these guys because, like, they'll tell you this is my first time literally playing bass in a band. Like, I used to do vocals in a power violence hardcore band, okay. so now I'm just like, this is all so new to me. And then like we're immediately working with Matt Brash, and I'm like. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like, it was actually so bad to where, like, when we went to go record our songs, Billy had to record my bass parts for me. Because I was just like, I've never done this before. I really don't know what I'm doing. Like, I play guitar, but, like, barely. 
Uh, the studio is so tough, though, so but, I don't but, hold that and, shit against you. And Matt is a perfectionist in the studio. But, and but like, he's very patient, and yeah. I honestly, I've been learning so much with like since working with these guys. And, uh, you know, I've known Billy for, what, like damn near 13 Ten years, years now? Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time, and uh, I've always said to him, I was like, when are we going to play in a band together, dude? Forever. I don't think any of us thought it was going to be a pop-punk band, but I'm not upset <laughs> yeah, about no. it at all. But yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun since uh you know I'm really liking the music. I think uh you know I relate well to the message in the music and whatnot, and uh, it's just been fun. It's a lot of big like- things happening. So, how did you get hooked up with Common Thread Records? Because they're out of Texas. And, uh, uh so Chris yeah. Ventura, um, one third of Common Thread. He's yeah. actually from Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and okay. I played in a hardcore band with him called Ripped Away. And okay. I remember when he linked up with Steven and Chris Jacobs and he was like, yeah, I'm like doing this, this record label thing, giving it a shot. We'll see how it pans out. And like hearing about the bands that he started working with, I was like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And then hearing like they're reprinting stretch Armstrong vinyls. I'm like, oh, yo, this is really cool. And then yeah. sending him like, as soon as the pop punk band started, as soon as West Main became a thing. I was like, yo, I don't know if you'd have any interest. Obviously, we're very unseasoned. We don't really know what we're doing, but we're doing our best. And I mean, any one of these guys will tell you I'm like a Nazi perfectionist when it comes to music. Like, at like, not to say that I demand perfection, but I like, these are my best friends and I know what they're capable of. And I want mm-hmm. to elicit the best that I possibly can from them. Sure. That's how um, it comes across too. I mean, it's never like behind your back, like yeah, fucking Billy. I hate that dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Where should we get off my back? Jesus Christ! No, it, Billy, it's definitely Billy's like also, an encouraging way. Billy's also a very like serious person outside of music, anyway. So if you know him outside of making music with him, you kind of know what he's like going into it, and like sure. even if like we get aggravated with each other, we'll all start busting each other's balls. And, For like, sure. You know what? Actually, I take that back. I do hate you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that all that attitude I also had and ripped away. So, like, I guess Chris kind of knew. Like, I'm I'm a relatively professional guy, um, and like what I'm doing, like I'm gonna put a hundred percent of myself into, and I'm gonna surround myself with people that are gonna go a hundred percent. So, I think he already was like, "Oh, okay, cool. I'll keep my eye on that." Um, yeah. And then we released a three song demo. When was that? In May? We the the year of recording was just came up on my like Facebook oh, wow. memories. So I guess it was last year. I can't even remember at this at some at this point it's it's been yeah, a while. We recorded but, um, a year ago, like two weeks ago. Yeah. We we put that out on our own just because I feel like bands that like jump to like putting stuff out like I get it because you can skip a lot of hard steps doing that, but I also feel like you don't really figure out what your band's made of by doing that. Um, Mm -hmm. And the reception, like the arbitrary online numbers, do we have 100,000 streams on Spotify? No, absolutely not. But I also don't really care. We play our hometown and 150 kids come out and they know the words. That's all I could ever want. Yeah, Yeah, that's Um, way better than anything. We did that Panico show. We lost Pat. I'm back. (laughs) I'm back. We played that Panico show in right in downtown Lansdale. That that was amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better crowd. It's um never done I, that before. I played, and this is not a shot at my other band. Um, I'm in another band called Freeze. We're a hardcore band. We just played a festival with Hatebreed like a month ago, and Panico show was better. The hometown but, dive bar show with 130 people through the door was better. Act wall to wall, just. Pop yeah, punk it's just it's it's a vibe and i think that's like going to pop punk shows and like especially in our hometown uh with the wonder years cultivated a pretty insane scene um yeah sure. like i grew up going to see bands like um bangarang bunch of those dudes went on to play in um man overboard mm-hmm. uh like a lot of dudes of that caliber were coming out of the area so i was going to a lot of shows as a kid um and like i had no, i was i was like 12 13 so i didn't even know what i was looking at but i knew that it was cool um i didn't know what a local scene was like these dudes 
playing at a VFW hall were just as famous as me going to see Fallout Boy at the Electric Factory. Um, and I never thought that I, that was even a possibility for me because it's I was like so awestruck and starstruck by what was going on around me. Um, we just got way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of that leads to now. I yeah, I was in a band with Chris Ventura and um, right on. So he and I were talking a lot, and then when we finally released that three song demo. We were working with Matt Brash. They were ready for a release, and we were it, the the recording process took so long just because we we like really doubled down on making sure these songs were perfect. We sure. were ready to release, and Chris was like, "Hey, you want to work together?" And I was like, "Yeah, we'll delay the release a little longer because this could be really cool." <laughs> um, and then yeah, he got us in touch with Chris Jacobs and Steven, and uh, and now I'm living in a world with three Chris's. Uh, that I'm talking to every single day, and it's so confusing. It's honestly getting hard to even listen to you because I don't know who you're talking about half the time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, um, so go ahead. I was no, say, you got it, Matt. I was going to say you brought up all these great bands that came from that area, um, like the Wonder Years, for example. Um, came out of the Philly pop punk scene. What do you feel are some things that make West Main stand out? We are nothing like any of those bands. Um. There is, if you hang around our scene long enough, there's definitely a sound. It's not a bad sound by any means. And the bands that do it around here do it incredibly well. Uh, there's a band right from right down the road, like literally two blocks from my house is where a bunch of the dudes grew up. They're called Merit. Incredible band. Um, it's crazy catchy. And like you can hear the essence of our hometown in it. I... Oh, yeah. I grew up listening to Fall Out Boy. I grew up listening to the starting line, Panic at the Disco. Like those are the bands I'm emulating. Um I didn't grow up going to local shows constantly. I went when, you know, my sister's boyfriends would take me or something. But um I grew up listening to like those bands. So like Chicago pop punk, like Las Vegas, like that whole all that stuff. And, you know, Maybe that's a little bit more like Radio Rocky, which, you know, if anyone says you don't do this for the money, but if you don't want to make money, that's strange to me. So, yeah. like, I mean, no one wants to. It, do it, I want to do I want to sell out? No. Will I sell out if you ask me to? <laughs> I mean, I think the the realism is anyone. OK, so anyone that says like, oh. I don't want to be I don't care about the money and that and that may be and that may be true and fine but and you I can't respect do it. This. you can't and you can, but you can't do this for a job as a career right. as life's passion without being able to make money you right. have to make money now that doesn't mean you have, I'm not going for glory but you're going for steady yeah okay. yeah exactly yeah, I exactly. anyone that ever asks and I'm sure these guys agree like I don't need to be a millionaire, but if I can support myself and like the people yes. I love doing this, my life's complete. I've, I've accomplished my mission. I can retire. Yeah. It's like, you know, going to Matt's house to record and seeing what he's got just based on the music that he's put out is yeah. like awesome. And, um, you know, local Anthony green, like he makes a living off his music. You know, yeah. it's just that, that, like Bill said, it's, it's just supporting yourself, doing something you love. Exactly. But, there is, uh, especially because those are the bands like a lot of us grew up listening to. Um, the obviously like Midwest emo is a big wave right now, and I don't right. get me wrong, I love it. Like Tiny Moving Parts, incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not my favorite era of pop punk, and I don't think it's any of our favorite era of pop punk. Sure. We are. We were. I mean, we're all like twenty-seven to thirty years old. So our golden years of listening are like from under dirt and soil story so far right. like that. And that, and to people our age, you say that album and they know every band that you're talking about, they know like the whole warp tour circuit when all of those bands were still like killing it in that era. That's where I want people to go back to in their brain when they listen to us. And that I people have said that to us too, and I'm and it like every time I get like butterflies because I'm like it's working. This is yeah, like that. I'm finally able to like we're all finally able to express exactly what we want, and people are picking up on it. I think 
to your point though like being or i mean the five of us are just literally all metal heads we've never played in a band like this before so coming from writing like hardcore to metal um and then like you said that peak pop punk era for us 20 was that 11 <clears throat> so like, yeah yeah 2013 2011 the, the pre the preteen years of the 2000s um and then also being younger and listening to bands like Fall Out Boy and Paramore you know you get that feeling of nostalgia while still having that grit to it so when people say stuff like that you know it's it's a really good feeling yeah oh yeah well we're gonna dive into back into some Halloween now you know we're gonna we'll jump around a little bit but I guess one of the things I was wondering is like, what Halloween or horror movie character do you most identify with, and why? Ooh, we're having existential crises oh, over here. <laughs> the got him. I'm waiting for Jake to be like, oh, "I'm Leatherface." <laughs> <laughs> nah, without getting too deep, I'd say either. For for different reasons, I say maybe Jason Voorhees and then Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal mm-hmm. Lecter because he's very. There he goes. Yeah, see, That's a, yeah, <laughs> there and gone. Com- well, the all, the he, always elusive Jason for Voorhees. For yeah, he's yeah. Ah, uh, dude, I like. If there ever came a day where like we all got a house together or something, that'd be the perfect moment for Jake to just like walk in from the background. <laughs> Never do that. I, I couldn't live with you guys. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna. I said uh, Leatherface. No, not Leatherface. You said Leatherface. I yeah. said Jason, Jason Voorhees. Voorhees and Hannibal Lecter. I'd guess I'd say because they're both very. Uh, you know, you don't know a lot about them. You know, Hannibal Lecter. He he. Th- you think he lets off a lot, but he doesn't. He's he's so mysterious and like. You know, all we know is he's this like sick doctor. You know, and he yeah. fucking eats people. Plus he likes to cook. And he, yeah, exactly. And like I'm a, I'm a chef, so it's you know, if I if I could like cook someone and have it taste good, I'd do it. And I had five of these. I'm just kidding, dude. And then Jason like, Voorhees because I have him tattooed on me, and he's all over my room. I just love Jason Voorhees. He's so misunderstood. It's Max. the nostalgia for me. And yeah, be, he, you know, he was bullied. He was a deformed, bullied yeah. kid, and Ignored. you know, they they bullied him to the point where he died. He didn't you know his mom. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's it's just got pissed. I also if, find like horror movies like that. Like I like slashers more than like ghost movies and stuff because I think, you know, there's not anything really stopping somebody from putting a mask on and going around, you know, killing. You're giving people, people ideas, Jake. Well, that's what's scary, though. That's the scary. That's what's scary about it. Like a ghost can't kill me. How do you know? I don't know. <laughs> mm. I'm kind of mm-hmm. like the opposite. I I tend to like um, demonic movies. Um, though I'm very picky about it. Like I like I say that, and everyone's like, "Oh, great, you like The Conjuring and shit and whatever." But um, a lot of that Blumhouse crap was really yeah. bad. Um, I got I got super into like the like the the, the Godfather A24 horror films. Um, like A24 money, like The Witch, Midsummer. Uh, and Hereditary are my top three favorite of all time. You know, minus like just a nostalgia factor of going back and watching like Halloween and stuff. Like the classic stuff always sit up there. But I feel like if I had to relate to any horror movies, it would be the main characters of those movies, Um, specifically the Peter, the Sun, and Hereditary, um, Florence Pugh, Midsummer, and Anya Taylor-Joy from The Witch, because they just kind of like watch shit like hit the fan and then they just like okay well i guess i'm switching sides and i'm just gonna be an all-powerful demon or a witch so <laughs> it is what it is i think that i'm so lethargic and laid back like that where i'll just be like okay this is my life now so i can see that what yeah. about you bill what, what what character do you think you relate to in horror i'm gonna you're throw more like the last you're like the last girl that's what you are <laughs> you're the final girl, <laughs> the final girl. <laughs> I was gonna say I relate heavily to both Tucker and Dale from Tucker and Dale versus Evil, <laughs> just because I have no idea what's going on around me. No, um, I was ironically, uh, I was gonna say, um, uh, what's her face from Scream? Sydney Prescott. Sydney, yeah. 
Yeah. Not for the fight or flight, just for the, like... Ugh, with that, again, like you said, without getting too deep, um, very, very often in my life, the people that are closest to me are, like, they're the ones that get me. Good be your Matthew it's Lillard. It's a good way of looking at it. Oh, Dude, Matthew. Math, Matthew Lillard is a I gem. Mean, you know, I stood in the same room with him once. I'm and I'm still jealous. Wasn't that like MonsterCon or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the line to get in to get his autograph was like, I would have been standing there for like eight hours. So I was like, I could just kind of like look at him from afar. Yeah, seeing him <laughs> in front of me is good enough for yeah. sure. I'm breathe the same air as him. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? Who do you who do you guys identify with? Oh, Matt, do you know what much horror even? <laughs> I hate horror movies, unfortunately. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, There's so much to learn from. <laughs> you know, like, what? don't I, put I, mask on and kill people. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you know, my gut reaction is uh is is Jason just misunderstood. That's fair. You know? Or or you or like Frankenstein. He just wants to be loved, man. Just wants That's to be a good loved. one. True. That's a good one. True. Oh, dude. I don't know if anyone here's watched it yet. Fall of the House of Usher. Uh, no. Netflix. I have not. So good. So good. I mean, it's one of my favorite Edgar Allan Poe books, so I'm like partial, but it chronicles like a ton of Poe's most famous writings. It's mm front to back incredible and it's like perfect halloween season watch i do love posts so i'll definitely check that out yeah they they recreate um the mask of red death in the first episode and i was like i'm excited to hear more halloween questions i like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah this i'm telling you man this is this is jake's forte we got one more question though from this section and i promise we have more halloween questions later mm-hmm. but uh, music stuff's my favorite so if you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now that you wish you knew when you started your journey, what would it be? Don't um, take yourself too serious. Yeah. yeah. Um. No. Know your worth. Yeah, because once you start big one, once you start getting a big head, like I noticed in a lot of bands that like I used to look up to until I knew them in person. I'm like, oh damn, like you can give a fuck less about me. You know, like, it's yeah, just like, there's... you know, like, don't, don't, you know, people are there because they like your music and they want to support you. So if someone is like willing to, you know, maybe they're nervous and it's their first time going to a show and like, they feel comfortable enough to come up to you because they're the, you're the band that they listen to all the time that they felt got them through a lot of stuff and they come up to you and you're just like, you know, you get cool. They get cool guide, you know, cause it's yeah. happened to me. Yeah. It's happened to me yeah. in front of Billy. I'm not going to put that story out on. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking. But like, about. you know, it, it, it hurts your feelings as a fan. Facts. You know, and like, and then even as like, a, you know, I I kind of tie it in more with hardcore rather than pop punk. But like, you know, here I am listening to this band and I identify with their message because I feel like that guy's going through the same thing I am. And then I feel the courage enough to go up and say something to him and like introduce myself. And then I just get like the cold shoulder and it's like, damn, like that's, that's how I'm going to think about everybody now in the, in the music. Like, you know, it's just, it's yeah. yeah. Just watch the egos and don't get a yeah. bad. And honestly, like what you just said kind of ties back to the last question too. the whole, like what makes us different. Obviously bands, write What they feel we write a lot about like the hometown. We write a lot about like old friends. We write a lot about mental health. More about what it's we've gone like, through than what like, we feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what you just said, Jake, it takes a lot to come up to somebody that you don't know who is, was just up on stage performing and say yeah. hi. And like, God knows we're all riddled with anxiety. We're all riddled with depression. Like these are our escapes and you've crushed this person and there's a good chance they won't come back. Yeah, so right. just <laughs> if there's one takeaway, be nice. Be nicer to people. <laughs> Everybody's like got to, struggles. Facts. I also like to add, it's kind of tied in because um, the similar situations, you know, just stuff you go through. Um, you know, I would say don't let outside influence, you know, determine, you know, what you're doing, whether it's being in a band or anything else. Because, I mean, 
Billy's been around. I've been in a band with Billy pretty much since 2014. And, you know, when I left that first band, that really put me in a spot that, you know, I really didn't realize it, too, it was too late that I should have just stayed in the band. So that was honestly what I was going to say was like before Jake was touching on that, like if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Just do what makes you happy and be nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to pick one thing to like give advice on. Yeah. There's so much that I've learned over the years of playing music and stuff that like, I wish Especially I could like someone... in the last year. Yeah. Like I wish I can take someone who's interested in starting a band and playing shows and like sit them down and just like really tell them like, listen, this is what you have to do. This is what you do not do. And then, you know, just because there, there really are do's and don'ts that'll like get you places and whatnot, or, you know, not get you places that'll hold also you Also, practice your instrument, please. please. Oh, you got to call me out on the podcast. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I am so much power to people that want to start bands, but, like, also it's... don't be afraid to tell your friends that they're not, their songs are not good. Because they need to hear that just as much as they need to hear that their songs aren't good. They yeah, need to know when to friend, try again. If they're your friend, they're going to accept that for what it is. Like, if yeah. I, I know for a fact if I show anybody any of these riffs or anything, and they're like, that's kind of really bad. I'll be like, oh, okay. You know, I'll move on, you know. Try again. No, it's Fair enough, yeah. about learning. All those are great pieces of advice. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next segment. What's up, friends? We're super stoked to tell you that we just partnered with G Fuel. And let me tell you, there is no more pop punk beverage on the market right now than G Fuel. G Fuel keeps you energized, focused, and hydrated. If you go to gfuel.com right now and use code unsigned pop punk, you're going to save 20% off your entire order. You can get it in the tub form and have. 40 freaking servings of flavors like Rick and Morty's Unstable Portal Fluid, which is a delicious strawberry limeade, or get something in the can form like Sonic's Peach Rings or Crash Bandicoot's Wumpa Fruit. Go to gfuel.com and check it out for yourself. Let us know what your favorite flavor is. And once again, don't forget to use our code Unsigned Pop Punk to save 20%. It's a heck of a deal, man. And we're back. Thank you so much for sticking around. It is time for the Food for Thought segment, where we are going to talk about food with a Halloween twist for some of <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> All right. So, we, before we get into that, though, we have to ask. Everyone knows what a Philly cheesesteak is, and there's a great debate whether Pat's or Gino's is better. So we got to know what, what's the best then. If I see you're all shaking. Neither. Neither. <laughs> Neither. Neither. I, what in your personal opinion then? What's the best place in Philly? No in one here. Place? No one here say D'Alessandro's. I'll lose my mind. Wasn't going to. All right. Thank you. You go, you go first. What do you think? Um. <sighs> see, I live closer to the city than all you guys. Yeah. So now it's easier. It's easier. Question for, for yeah. Me. Yeah. Let me, let me think. So I think, think it, it, when you come to Philly, like obviously you have like the Pats and Geno's, you have the D'Alessandro's, you have Jim Steaks and all that. Like you have these big names, but like you're going to find your best cheesesteak at like the mom and pop shop, like at the corner. Yeah. Um, but I think, sorry, Bill, D'Alessandro's is up there for me. <sighs> it's so good. There's so much freaking meat. Oh, it's I amazing. And Jim's then, on like, 63rd. Jim's is amazing. Yeah. That's That's what? definitely always been my number one. And then like Steve's is pretty good too. Steve's is okay. I don't like sliced steak. I like True. shredded. I would definitely prefer shredded over this. But if I get sliced, it's Steve's. If I get shredded, it's Jim's. It's a good cheese steak if the name of the place is just the first name of a South Philly Italian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. that's how you know it's a good one. Yeah, Jim's and like Steve's Nick's. If it feels yeah. like a, a lead weight hitting your stomach, that cheesesteak was good. Yeah, and like the Fresh Prince does it best. And like the, the second episode, if you don't see the grease coming through the bag. It's yeah. not a real Philly cheesesteak. Also, or, if whenever if you're in Philly and you plan to get a cheesesteak, it is not called a Philly cheesesteak. It is just a cheesesteak. Just a cheesesteak. Just a cheesesteak. Well, well, no, you're yeah. a tourist from a mile away. Yeah, and yeah. Lorenzo's <laughs> Pizza. Lorenzo's Pizza is not the best pizza in Philly. Not even, not even close. Facts. It's garbage. I well, all I right. So <laughs> Pat's, I Pat's and Gino's. Philly for pizza. I was going to say Philly. There is no best pizza in Philly. Yeah. But if you come to go where to, I live in Delco. 
that's where you get the best pizza in, yeah, in the world. Yeah. we're actually like a really good area when it comes to food like obviously when you think of pizza you think of like new york and like there's some staples around like the whole northeast that um you think of certain areas but like philly's in the middle of like everything so we get the best of kind of like everything like obviously not the best but um but you, you get some really decent food out here sure i oh, will sure. say I, obviously like i i wouldn't expect it less <laughs> Pat's and Gino's are a tourist trap, but Pat's homemade hot sauce is so good. It's so uh, good. Honestly, no. the original Tony Luke's doesn't get enough credit. That's probably one of the best. Well, Charm they chained said. out, and the chains yeah. are terrible. Yeah, but the original right on, uh, what is it, Oregon Ave? Yeah, the right on the edge. edge. Yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. yeah. I, I like seeing um, people go into like gyms and try to order a cheesesteak. And just watching like all the cooks behind them just be like, yo, hurry up. What do you want? Like just you, they just start berating you if you don't exactly yeah. just walk up and be like cheesesteak quit without. Like, I was gonna say <laughs> as soon as they get hit with with without, they're like, um, what does that mean? It's like that means go to the back of the line. That means go figure it out and try again later. <laughs> the real book. That's what it means. <laughs> oh, and never, ever, 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 if you're gonna do the tourist trap thing cross the street with the opposite place's bag you'll get screamed at if you <laughs> yeah. walk near pats with a geno's bag or geno's with a pats bag you're you're cooked <laughs> and it's, it's on site home. yeah yeah That's... we have really good hospitality here <laughs> oh i mean well i know first off i watch plenty of it's always sunny and that is so, very <laughs> realistic perfect show yeah. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, it is a parody show, but it, you do find some characters kind of similar to that. Yeah, Mac sure. has a Tony <laughs> Romo jersey. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right. So it's, you know, back to some more Halloween questions, though. Uh, what would you say is the best Halloween candy you can get while trick or treating? And what is the worst? Pretzels are the worst. Candy corn Fair. is the worst. Candy corn oh. is also up there. Circus peanuts are the worst too. Oh. Do people give this about family? them? I does, hope not. Yeah, does anyone get that? <laughs> oh, you're just a um, bad person if you do that. Jehovah's Witness pamphlets are the worst. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's... Best candy um, Reese's. I mean, that's just my favorite. Reese's like, is always candy. great, especially if it's like the like the seasonal ones. ones. You go like the rich neighborhoods, and they have the big candy bars. Oh yeah, yeah. that's like the anybody best. that puts weed in my candy. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's not cheap. Thanks. <laughs> Times are that's, tough. That's a treat. <laughs> um. Yeah, I really think dude, it just comes down to like your favorite in like a full size form. Yeah. Sure. Full size Kit Kat. Full size Three Musketeers. Full size Snickers. That's mine. The worst. Are the mounds? I like almond joy, but mounds are the worst. I Just love coconut. Mounds. I, I like love coconut. coconut. Needs to have the almond in there. I do too. Almond's the best part. No, I'm not going to pick either of those, to be honest. Yeah, you can all burn in hell. <laughs> I like them both, but I like them. <laughs> almond joy is fantastic. Payday. Me and Jake were just talking about payday. Payday is an underrated candy. Yeah. You know, one of the so of the things that I can think of that I know I've gotten in like while i was trick-or-treating that people often forget about is bit of honey and that sucks dude oh, i dude, love bit of honey you like broken I... teeth for halloween <laughs> Eat a bit of honey. <laughs> i'm i'm an old man though i'd like dude if you put like butterscotch candy in my bag oh you got oh i got it. a worthers yes <laughs> dude love it love it <laughs> you can have it I mean, I could fuck with some Werther's. I, I I probably haven't had one in about 15 years, but... They're the ones with, like, the soft caramel on the inside, right? But the hard shell. Am I thinking of the right one? I mean, the, I, I'm sure those are a version, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you I know think that's good? one of those candies that, like, I just, like... I, I'll just say I hate off the bat, and then I have one. I'm like, all right. But I'm not going <laughs> to change my mind in the conversation. Yeah. Boy. Pride at that point. I'm just going to uh, hate it. The little strawberry candies that are wrapped in like the strawberry wrapping paper. I love those. Dude, they're so good. You are love literally those. a seven year old man. I know. <laughs> those are great. If, if old people have it in their purse, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hold the bucket, just 
get your purse and just whatever. Yeah, the- yeah. <laughs> yeah just exactly. Go back purse. inside and shake it out. This is a robbery, and not for your money. <laughs> for Give me your- all your hard candy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all your hard. Candy. <laughs> you are going to be throwing a West Main Holloway Halloween party. What food and drinks are you going to serve to your guests? Beer. That's it. Yeah, uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even drink. I don't know. What have we had at all the parties I've had? A nice hot dogs. For punch. <sighs> yeah, it's a lot of grilling. We do a lot of grilling. Yeah, hot dogs for sure. I'll, I'll eat like six or seven glizzies in one one sitting. I had to go out and buy more hot dogs for Bill. <laughs> the last time he was over. Nick, was it for the Super Bowl last year? Shelby made those <laughs> really good uh, little tiny <laughs> lotes. Probably yes. Uh, she made these little tiny the- baby corn lotes. If you're familiar. <laughs> The Spanish corn, street corn. That was the Super Bowl party where I looked at Jake and he never <laughs> didn't have food in his hand or mouth. Like I'm serious. For like the full four hours of the Super Bowl party, he was eating. He was I think also that's the first time I met you. High. <laughs> that yeah, no, that was the first time I came over to your house, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. I'm trying to think of something. I mean, dude, candied apples are always fire. Yeah. Yeah. Candied apples. And they're super easy. With some walnuts. Yeah, back around the side. Yeah, of yeah. Um, apple cider always down, always down. Especially like because we're adults, like you can you can dress Spike up it. apple cider. Yeah, with with some alcohol for people. That would yeah, be we sick. always make an apple cider uh, sangria every yeah. fall. Mm. So good. I don't yeah, drink Nick, it all. So Nick and his fiance are like the big party people and the big planners. So like she loves to host. Yeah, they they'll throw down if we had a Halloween party. And like it would probably be in their living room too, which would be dope. Which we there's an idea brewing right here. Yeah, can um, we can we do that? Actually, that sounds maybe fun. next year. Honestly, whenever we'll fly fly you guys out to podcast live. Hell Let's yeah, do it. That I'm would in. be that would actually be really fun. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I would put all my faith in you guys to do that because you guys kill it every single time. I'm serving pierogies at the Halloween party. Uh, Yo, I will I will Homemade. fuck up pierogies right now. Jake will serve cabbage, let's be real. <laughs> you need some sort of like some sort of drink though with dry ice in it that's just yeah. Blow- yeah, the spooky punch. Yeah. yeah spooky punch. Mm, we'll put it in the uh the bucket <laughs> holding the keg. Cauldron? Yeah. Dude, a cauldron keg would be dope. Be with, yeah. with, a, with a ladle. To- <laughs> that would be sick. Oh yeah. I'd support it. All right. That is the end of our food for thought segment. And we did. So I added something special for you guys. Ooh. Normally we go right into rapid fire questions, but we're not doing that yet. We're going to do a couple questions of Halloween trivia. Oh, Jake. I'll All try right. my best. Yeah. There's only, there's only three questions, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see All what right. you got. It's, it's, it's not just Halloween movies. It's just Halloween. All right. Uh, okay. All right. So, a person born on Halloween has what particular ability? Or what, based on what some superstitions suggest, of course. Oh. Does that have to do with, like, the dead? Since, like, All Hallows Eve and stuff? Maybe. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I'm going to say <laughs> shape-shifting. Shape yeah. <laughs> like a cat or a bat. I mean, my brain it just immediately is like, you're a witch. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. No, I'm mad at myself for not. I'm going to tell that. everyone and be way smarter than everyone. This is going to be great. <laughs> the answer. All right. So, what's your final answer you're going with? I'm going with uh, some sort of in between of the dead. I'm going to say some witchcraft. Okay. The answer. Is the ability to see and communicate with spirits. Let's go. All right, oh. All okay. right Nick. Let's go. Hell that yeah. makes sense. That makes All sense. Right. I Good read. job, Nick. I read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next one is uh, a little movie trivia. And I think you can, I think you got it though. In The Nightmare Before Christmas, what was Oogie Boogie made of? Burlap sack full with bugs. Yeah, burlap sack with bugs. Yeah. I was going to say maggots, but I don't think it specifies. 
Now, there's all there's only one particular thing. Like you got it right. That's that's accurate. But the, he does have one special thing for his tongue. Oh, oh I can see it in my head. Uh, is it a snake? That's what I thought too. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't want to say snake because, like, it, as soon as like I started thinking about it, I was thinking about the same. Obvious. Worm, same I almost said. From, I almost. Like, I almost said a worm. From Beetlejuice. Worm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've had right. Beetlejuice in years. <laughs> Matt, hit him with that. With the last one. In Scotland, what vegetable used is used to be carved into a jack o' lantern? Scotland. Oh, dude, I, ju- I just read this like a couple weeks ago. Is it is a vegetable? Up if I said potato. <laughs> it is a, it's a vegetable. Oh, uh, squash? squash? Yeah. It is a turnip. Wow. Wow. All right. That <laughs> sounds actually really Scottish. I was going to say that's the most <laughs> Scottish thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's, I actually yeah. didn't know like both of those quite the first two uh the first question and the last one. I didn't know the, the I like that though. I like I'm the idea gonna... of Halloween trivia. Yeah. Was, yeah I'm not cool. gonna lie to you. I didn't even know what a turnip was until I <laughs> until I looked it up. I'm like, what the fuck is a turnip? Dude, they're pretty good. You gotta make them the right no, way. No, 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 they're so bad. Stop, Jake. This man <laughs> eats this man eats cabbage for fun. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Bro, I love sauerkraut. Like, yeah. I love cabbage. You're I love disgusting. I hate you. Dude, I'm Polish. My family's from Poland. What do you think? Yeah. You should just get out yeah, of the band. Do better. I grew up eating like pig fat and like other gelatin stuff. All right. <laughs> I, I can tell, buddy. <laughs> oh gosh. That's funny. I uh I I'm Polish as well, but I did not grow up eating like that. <laughs> yeah, smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have switched up. We have completely switched up our rapid fire questions. We're going to d- jump into rapid fire question segment. Friendships will be tested. Rapid fire questions. It is basically completely rearranged and Halloweenified. Awesome. So you're oh, just yeah. going to you're just going to speak from the heart. You're going to shoot from the hip. What is the first thing that pops in your head? You go for it. You ready? Yep. All right. Snickers or Twix? Snickers. Horror or comedy movies? Horror. 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 Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Michael Myers. Jason. Jason. Jason for sure. Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh. oh. Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Goosebumps, are You Afraid of the Dark? I, think. I don't know that stuff. <laughs> Say cheese and die is classic. Dude, classic. Um, Dracula or the Wolfman? Dracula. Dracula. Wolfman. Wolfman. See, I think sure. it, like I was thinking about that, and I was like, both of those can turn people into one of them. So you yeah, know, it's like it's kind of an interesting thought of those two like duking it out. Where the mind? Where were was a greeter? The mind control aspect of vampires has always terrified me. Oh, since I was a child. I watched My Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire on Disney Channel. And I was like, <laughs> that's scary. I don't like that. I just don't like a lot of body hair. That's fair. <laughs> fair, fair. All right. Sydney Prescott or Laurie Strode? Sydney Prescott. Sydney. 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 This isn't an either or, but what is the scariest thing? Within reach right now. My kitten. <laughs> she will attack on sight. Uh, I, a jar of toothpicks. I got a switchblade. <laughs> I got a baphomet. Oh, switchblade wins. <laughs> oh, you know what? Me too, Bill. <laughs> An AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I, <laughs> most of us live in kind of sketchy areas, so the guns are on the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> the Misfits or AFI? Oh, which which Ooh, era? Yeah. Which AFI? era? Are we, yeah. yeah, if which it's era, the Misfits. In gen- it's general, in general, uh, uh, I do like the Glenn Danzig era of Misfits. 
Yeah, I, was, I love Danzig, but Man, I'm gonna have like, to go dude, Misfits. But those first two AFI albums are perfect. Dude, the first three are amazing, and December Underground was perfect. Honestly, maybe it's the contrarian in me. I'm gonna go AFI. <laughs> there you go. Although their Misfits guitar player would literally tear me in half. He heard me say that. <laughs> <laughs> accurate, accurate. And now, normally for this last question, we do we we do a jingle, but we switched it up for this. This one, you're just gonna. Finish the lyric. Oh. <laughs> it's it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> we got very worried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did the monster mash. It was a blank. Gra- graveyard, graveyard smash. smash. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say he did the mash. He did the mash. <laughs> he did the monster mash. <laughs> Jake, didn't you show up to practice? Blasting that, blasting yes, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a, as soon as it starts to feel a little spooky out, I have a classical Halloween playlist that I just listen to all the time, and what? then I have like in the like actual classic though. You roll to practice playing the weirdest shit. <laughs> I love Outlaw Country, so I always roll up blasting Outlaw Country and stuff. There you go. There's I nothing do. wrong just... with that. Outlaw and then Dumb. our our drummer rolls up, just <laughs> blasting like fusion and jazz. Like things that you don't listen to at max volume. None of us listen to the music we play. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty much. That's actually facts. I I'm listen to horror club. movie soundtracks. That's see, that's <laughs> awesome day. though. I listen to Justin Bieber. That's not like, I'm not even capping. I love old Justin Bieber. I do think I have uh on C D that like one album with, with baby on it. Oh, that's the original. Once you yeah. started that's collabing with Skrillex, I was world? into it. Yeah, that album. Yeah, the, the 2015, 2015 album. Yeah, yeah perfect. Front perfect album. So yeah. good. Hell yeah. Well, that's it, though. You did it. You finished the podcast. Ooh, let's go. Yeah. This was fun. Oh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Let everybody know what you have going on, where they can find you, and what's next for West Main. We got unannounced, but well, I guess this is a soft announcement. We got a holiday show coming up in uh, December. Uh, it's a Toys for Tots event. Um, oh, yeah. we're hosting locally uh so give back at the perfect time of year and it's got a bunch of our friends we're going to be playing a cover that will only be played on that day we are going to be recording and releasing that too in the future that's also another soft announcement y'all are getting the exclusive um yeah, yeah we got by the time this airs we'll have already released the songs um we shot a music video on sunday for one of them i just finished editing and putting it together today so that'll be out too um you can find us on every single social media west main pa um and also just thank you guys so much for having us this was so yeah, much fun thank yes, you. this was Love great fun. thank yes. you we appreciate that it. was a great time yeah. sorry yeah. about uh, the, the technical difficulties at the beginning <laughs> variety is the spice of life <laughs> true you know you got just got to do it do what you got do with what you got. But oh, yeah. Matt and I, we're going to hop into the Unsigned Pop Punk News, and you can hang out with us and continue uh, after this jingle right here. What's up, friends? Welcome back to the uh, to the show. Now we're in the Unsigned Pop Punk News section of the show, which you've been waiting for this whole time. But yeah, tomorrow is Halloween, so I hope you all had uh, a great weekend to party beforehand and I hope you have fun trick-or-treating if you're too old to trick-or-treat uh, you're wrong you're never too old to trick-or-treat go trick-or-treating it's awesome go do it anyway who cares uh, I saw a TikTok today of two old like two like people our age Pat and they were dressed as a uh, uh, was Stewie and his mom from Mad TV yeah. oh it, it brought That's me right awesome. back it brought me right back also shout out to Careful Gaze I really like this hat. Yeah, it's a sweet hat. I like it. Anyway. Um, yeah, geez, you know, have a have a good Halloween. Um, what else we got? You know, what'd you think of this episode? What'd you think? What'd you think? What'd you think of the uh, uh the the you know Halloween format? We thought, <laughs> thought it was fun. I enjoy. I particularly Matt um enjoyed like the Halloween trivia. Like I love doing that. We did it last year too. And uh, I always love doing it. I think it's so fun. 
I, I was I was personally I was glad that you put the answers there. For, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know these things. We have to know the answer because yeah. I probably remembered it. But yeah, tell us what you think of the episode. Shoot us some comments, you know, drop us a line. Just let us know what you think and uh what you'd like to see from this show. You know, this the season is coming to a close here, so yes. we're getting ready to for next year, next season. So, we you know, are. is there any anything in particular you want to want us to talk about, or any guests you'd like to see? Just let us know. Let us know. Try to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, just you or if you know a guest, you know, let us know. Like Pat said, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. But also, you need more clothes and you need more clothes that have purpose and i have clothes that have purpose and i have coffee mugs with purpose our gender equality line is still out there still supporting the trevor project whose mission is to end suicide among lgbtq youth um every purchase we have of our gender equality merch which you can find on our website 15 percent of that goes to the trevor project to help with their 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 cause so help us in supporting the amazing cause and support saving young lgbtq lives heck yeah and we got other really rad uh merch up you know if if you're waiting till monday monday i think you'll have one more day to pick up our limited edition fantasy football league team shirts it's november 1st they're done. It's gone. Sure. You can't get it anymore. So if you're waiting until that last second, it is that last second. So make sure you go pick it up. Um, also, you know, we got our new metal merch. We got this rad hat right there. You're rad. Black denim. It's tight. Uh, it's very comfortable. And uh, yeah, we got a whole whole bunch of cool stuff in our new metal merch drop. So that's that's the merch focus going forward. But yeah, that's uh, that's the way the news goes. Just want to say thank you to my good friend Matt here, uh, for hanging out, always being my friend, and want to say thank you to the West Main peeps for hanging out with us uh, this, this week. This was an awesome episode. It was a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun. Uh, thanks so much to to Gibby, to Lawrence Crow for doing all of that rad, awesome merch and. Uh, designing that he does for everything our posters our merch our website all the all of the stuff you see with Lawrence Crow he does it all uh he's the man man with the plan and thanks so much to Ross from uh Electric Kiwi for all of our website needs so if you have website needs needs for a website hit up Ross at Electric Kiwi and he's gonna get you hooked up yeah, yeah Matt we did it. Hey, have a happy Halloween. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Please hit that like, subscribe, or follow button so you never miss an episode. And thank you so much to those of you who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. If you're in the position to help us grow and like behind the scenes access and exclusive shows, head on over to our Patreon at www dot patreon.com slash unsigned pop punk let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see thank you all so much